Uh, how can we get back the land that was taken from us for centuries? Because if you don't have any land, you don't have no power. All of these religious wars that you hear people fighting is not because of the religion, but they use the religion to facilitate their grab for land. The war right now in Afghanistan and all these places is land. When they kill Saddam Hussein, it's land. Because there's something in the land that is necessary to drive, especially now, the Western world. So they use the idea of war to grab land. And if there's no war, most time Europeans are in serious problem. So to facilitate their existence, there has to be war that is taking place. The war bring forth the acquisition of land. We now lose. Now we look in Iraq and we see that America went in there to capture the land and facilitate something that they call democracy. And some people that is thousands of years older than America, who have nothing to do with democracy, nor communism, they are their own way of dealing with their government affairs. But here come a Western um, power trying to put their doctrine on them and say that, they're going to put democracy where it was never and will never be accepted as a legitimate form of governance. So they use a war to destroy the country under the premise of some lie that they usually tell when they want to go into other people's land about weapons of mass destruction. And we know what they did over the years, over the decades what they did. They destroyed the land to put in democracy. Years after, they said they were going to leave the country because they feel that the country can facilitate this new order, democracy, when we see what is taking place now. And I am, I am looking on the TV and I'm hearing about ISIL. And then there were ISIS, and I started to get scared. I said, which group called them? They said, the goddess ISIS. And then I realized, oh, it means something else. Because I am getting very scared, because I love ISIS so much. That we hear now that ISIS is terrorizing the world. I start to wonder, where can I turn now for that mother that I saw embellished in ISIS? Horus and Osiris. But when we look and we say that America now left a broken society, I don't feel no way now we're not straying from what we're going to talk about, but we're trying to develop this thing into a land thing. And one of the, the more accessible thing now we can use is this Iraq thing. When we say that they destroy the people in land and claim that they now free the people. The remnants of those war, the farmer soldiers and the farmer people who used to deal with Saddam and who used to be against Saddam, recognize that, okay, now that they're gone, we can do a thing. So they create a government, even though the Western world says a terrorist thing, but one man terrorist, the next man hero. They create a government that now America is saying that this terrorist group is richer and more devastating than Al Qaeda, who they told us again that if they had killed Osama bin Laden, Things would go back to normal when they realize that it's not one man that carries the philosophy of freedom and liberation. But freedom and liberation spread like a virus in the atmosphere and connect with human beings who find themselves suffering and who find themselves landless. 
And the more landless you are, is the more you will fight to get land or to get back your land. Because land is the basis of power. So they are confronted now with a regime that they say is more terrible. And that regime has a military base, military foundation. So they find themselves fighting now a government who has the resources to fight them. And they are scared to put their soldiers and their children again in Iraq to fight them on the ground. Because they know that if they do that, it will be hell and water house in America. Because the Americans don't want their children to stand up in front of some people who is going to tie bomb on themselves and don't care if them dead or not. Because Americans are not going to do that. America not going to tie a bomb on themselves and kill themselves and blow up everybody. But these guys who is embellished in a religion that tell themselves 72 versions of the sky are going to go for them. And to be honest with you, if I didn't show that 72 version of them, I would have done it too. <laughs> but it's a, it's, a, it's a promise that I don't want to go into if I don't show her. But if a guy could have really go up there and come back up to me and say, more time, you know, it's 72 version of me up there, I'd say, give me the bomb. <laughs> so, Iraq is in turmoil now. Killings and killings and more killings. And they don't know what to do. But we say, they don't want to target Iraq and Afghanistan and Pakistan. But now we see the militarization of Africa by this president who people thought it was Jesus Christ. Them say a black man in the White House, the struggle done now. Because this is what we aim for. And black nationalists in America says that I never knew I would live to see the day when a black man is in the White House. The problem with it is that the White House is bigger than the black man. Yeah. Because the White House is not just a building, but it's a representation of a system that is perpetuated, not because of the color of the skin of the person in it, but a system that we choose to call white supremacy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And white supremacy sometimes functions outside of the premise of just trying to manipulate people of color. But whosoever is in the way will be wiped out, including liberal white people. So if you know that you're a liberal white fighting against this, you know that somewhere along the line you have to take a stand. Somewhere along the line you have to take a stand. Because right now, Obama has killed more children and women in Afghanistan than what Bush killed. Obama has militarized Africa more than what Bush did. So when we thought that Bush, we could never have a second. We don't have a second right now. We have third, fourth, and fifth in a one man, a black man named Obama, but we know that America would never allow the son of a slave to rule them country. Why well, repeat that because black people feel say, why well, is a black man? We say, America, the system of America will never allow a son of a slave to rule them. Obama is not the son of a slave. Check that. He's not the son of a slave. Can you imagine if the son of a slave was governing? I don't know if you can imagine that because that is ridiculously impossible. But land is what we say the militarization of Africa is all about. 
And when we look to the east of Africa, we see a next group of people. They call themselves Chinese. And the Chinese now is using methods that we know is very Western to facilitate the capture of land in Africa, just like what they did hundreds of years ago. Now we have two set of people in Africa now that is trying to take away the land from the indigenous people, America and the Chinese. And the Chinese now is using money, money. The Americans is using military. What a serious problem Africa is in. Military and money. What is it that African people have that is necessary to facilitate generations and generations of African people? We have land. Land is what it is all about. And if we don't protect the land, the military will take it away, or the money will take it away. And it's the same thing in the Caribbean. The Caribbean people don't recognize how important the land that them have is in the Caribbean. So what we do? We have governments in the Caribbean that is facilitating the acquiring of land. Cool, Exempted.